Hello students, my name is Gaurav Bunsal and I'm going to start this very interesting series on NCRTs. In this series, I will cover all the NCRTs chapter by chapter. Okay, so we have three NCRTs, one for class 11th and two for class 12th. The class 12th ones are microeconomics, macroeconomics, while class 11th one is the Indian economy. The order used by the NCRT is a bit different. They use micro and macro in 12th, but for my sessions, I believe it is better if we start with microeconomics, then go to macroeconomics, and then we go to Indian economy. In this order, it would be better understood by students. And it is in this order, it is taught in almost all the universities across the world. Okay, and that is how we were taught in Delhi University in the economics honors. And even in MA, the first semester courses were micro, macro, Indian economy, Indian economy related issues came much later. Anyways, in this first session, I'm not starting with any chapter. I'm discussing what to study from NCRT. Okay. Highlighting all the syllabus given in NCRT, comparing it with the UPSC given syllabus and how much the NCRTs cover and what to study from them. Let us start. So, first I am going to talk about the NCRT from class 11th. Although I will cover it later in my order of the things, but let us go by the order, the sequential order as of now. The first chapter is the development policies and experience of India. In that, the first is Indian economy on the eve of independence. Just give me one second. Okay. <clears throat> so this you have to cover entirely. What were the conditions in Indian economy at the time of independence or before the independence? What was the impact of British rule on Indian economy? Now, from these impact, we will understand what were the conditions and what was required in order to avert those conditions, in order to remove those conditions. We will understand what were the challenges in that time and what were the challenges in that time and what were the challenges in that time and what were the challenges in that time. So why I will be using Hindi and English mix, okay? But those who do not understand Hindi should not worry because I will always be repeating it in English. I will not say anything exclusively in Hindi. Now, in this particular part, we will understand the impact of British rule and the conditions it created. And from that, we will understand why we opted for certain policies, why we opted for mixed economy, why we opted for supply side system, why we opted for industrial policy, okay, heavy industrial policy. Because if you look at the first phase of our planning, that is 1950 to 1965 almost, the focus was much more on industry compared to agriculture. Whereas the next phase was focused on agriculture much more. So likewise, why did we opt it for specific policies at specific time? We will understand that and that is the reason why we need to follow it. Because this will explain you the planning in India. Okay, direct question on this, I do not really expect to be asked directly. But if there is a question on planning, if there is a question on our old planning system or even the new planning system, you may have to go back to this. And in case of agriculture, some of the impact of British rule still impact India. The areas which were doing worst under British rule are still the worst for farming areas. And these are the areas which came under permanent settlement system, what we call as Zamidari Prata. Whereas better performing system mostly were under Mahalwari system. So that had an impact and it, this impact is still very much visible. Anyways, the second chapter will be Indian economy 1950 to 1990. So basically the entire closed economy period in 1991, we brought reforms. After that, we opened up the Indian economy. So until Indian economy remained closed, that closed economy we studied. So during this period, it was the planning commission which was deciding a lot of things. State government or central government which was dominating the economy. Market was playing a very lesser role. So that is what we will understand here. <laughs> Directly, this is something which is also mentioned in the syllabus. Not this part, but the performance of Indian economy. Okay, That is there. 
and reforms with industry that is mentioned. Okay, so that is going to cover the basic that we need to follow. Then economic reform since 1991. So we need to understand the liberalization, privatization and globalization. And when I will discuss it, I will go much beyond the scope of NCRTs here because when I will explain, I will explain it thoroughly. Okay. So, but still we will keep it within the framework given by NCRT, even though we increase the content here. So all of these are very important for us to cover. Then we come to the challenges facing the Indian economy. So for that, we go to the next page. Here, human capital, human development, or education, future prospects, basically these are the challenges. So human capital formation. How do we create human capital? So human capital is created by spending on education, health, and otherwise on our people to improve their well-being. So that part is there. Then we have rural development. Rural development is not directly mentioned, okay? But rural development is indirectly covered when we talk about inclusive growth. When we talk about the sustainable development or development as such, growth, development, inclusive growth, sustainable development. This is a topic in our syllabus and a very big and important topic. So rural development is going to cover that because we need to understand this uh, inclusive growth that there should not be difference in the performance of urban and rural areas. But why do we have a difference? What we can do for rural areas that we will understand here. And then we have employment growth, informalization and other issues. These are labor related issues. So along with industry, very in a very small way, it is there in the syllabus. Okay, highly indirectly. This is also important, but I would say NCRTs are not able to do justice. Even for rural development also, the content given in NCRT is not enough for us. But it will nonetheless cover some basics. When I will cover it from NCRT, I will cover some basic definitions which are used today. Okay, what is the usual status? What is the uh, overall status, etc. Daily status, etc. So those things, okay. Uh, what is the formal labor, informal labor, etc. And a lot of other things. Then environment and sustainable development. Well, sustainable development is mentioned in our syllabus and we need to understand that. But we need not cover it thoroughly. The definition of environment from here is not necessary. Because you study environment anyways as a part of general studies. That is more than enough for, to cover up for this. You do not have to study about environment in an Indian economy book. Only read the sustainable development part. And even that you skip, it is okay. okay? But anyways, I will cover it along with the rural development or the some of the other chapter. I will just cover, capture this dimension. Then the last chapter is about the comparative development experience means the comparison between India's development and growth and other countries development and growth, particularly looking with neighbors. So here we are going to talk about India's performance vis-a-vis -vis Sri Lanka, Nepal and the other countries and what is their developmental experience and our developmental experience. Now, uh, some part of the syllabus is mentioned there. And because it was on the next page, there was no need to include the next slide just for these three topics. So I have included it here on this page itself. And you can download these slides. Okay, The link for downloading this slide will be available on the comment or description. So you will be able to download this slide. So with this, we have covered the class 11th NCRT that what all we have to study and which part of the syllabus it is going to cater to. The chapter number 8, although we have to study it, it is not going to cater to any specific part. <coughs> because comparative development is not something they ask in examination or they even, let us say, mention in syllabus. But you know why we have to study? Because they may not ask a direct question on this. But if they ask you a question on India's performance on some index, you have to provide content from your side. So you can use that information in other answers because nature of question is always something like that. Right? Even on a topic of rural development, you can talk about some of the data on demography on com or also competitive data. So competitive data are useful in many places. That is why we are going to look at it. And I will expand the scope of this chapter when I'm going to cover it. Next, 
now we come to the class 12 ncrts and here this is the class 12 microeconomics ncrt just give me one second i think it is not visible i hope now it is completely visible ab ye pura dikh raha hoga so there are six chapters in the macro economics so we do not have to cover the chapter 1 which is emergence of micro macro economics or context of the present book of macro economics we can skip this we have to cover this entire chapter 2 okay even the one which i somehow forgot to highlight okay we have to cover this entire chapter we have to cover money and banking okay but we can skip these topic limits to credit creation multiplier and fictional bank these two topics we can skip okay policy tools to control money supply we have to study and that is so this we have to study and that is very important topic because gdp is mentioned in the syllabus and when gdp is mentioned it covers your basic national income accounting through that and we need to study it and when i will cover this i will expand the scope of this chapter and i will cover much more terms okay in crt i will cover thoroughly but i will expand wherever there are additional terms related to those concepts i will cover those as well the chapter number 4 we just have to study consumption and investment we do not have to study about these okay the two sectoral income the equilibrium income okay autonomous change in aggregate demand aggregate supply we do not have to bother with we do not have to study these we just have to bother with the money the gdp the consumption and investment part only okay and then we come to the government budget the component of budget okay revenue account capital account what comes in each so budgeting is very much part of the syllabus and if you look at the nature of questions a lot of questions from this sections are regularly asked so this is very very relevant for both pt and mains so all of these you will see a lot of pt questions in fact i have already covered all the past year questions okay for past 10 years in the revision series if you want to check out previous year question on any of these topic you can cover that okay i will also provide link for a respective video covering pyq there now next is open economy macroeconomics so balance of payment foreign exchange okay types of exchange rate that is also relevant the very basic part is covered this will not explain the foreign trade international trade part it will not cover the trade theory it will only cover the bop what is part of current account what is part of capital account okay which is very similar to the budget classification by the way and then it will also cover the foreign exchange market what is the exchange rate how do we determine exchange rate and what are different types of exchange rate fixed rate floating rate then what are the different adjustments or fluctuations in the exchange rate like depreciation appreciation etc but this will not cover in detail about real exchange rate versus nominal exchange rate effective exchange rate so when i will cover this chapter i will cover that as well so that way we will cover macro so some topics we do not have to cover okay so you can skip these topics which i have left out and as i told you you can download this slide it will be available next is about microeconomics so this is the last ncrt that we are going to cover so in total there would be about 18 videos or 17 videos from these because there are about 6 6 and 9 okay and some of these chapters we may be able to merge or a handful of chapter we may have to skip also for that's why we will cover it bit selectively in microeconomics we have to cover the least actually because there are a lot of theories which have never been asked and they are not even related to the others so for example central problems of an economy is it is actually something we also study in macro in fact this first part the centrally planned economy market economy central problem you can't say this is specifically micro or macro okay this is the fundamental economics in fact i would say this is more close to macro nonetheless 
this positive and normative just the definition we need to understand not very very relevant to the okay, difference between micro and macro also very briefly so this will be a very very small video when i will cover it but still you go through it once not very very important okay then this entire utility budget part you have to skip okay not the government of india budget individuals budget we do not have to do that but after this this demand we have to cover completely okay so study entire demand part demand supply elasticity all of these are important then there is a topic of production and cost you can study that by the way there is no problem if you study this but you do not have to spend too much on of time on this just go through it once so that you uh, do not feel that i have left anything but this is not very very relevant okay total product average product marginal product on these questions have not been asked short run long run is relatively important okay i mean relatively relevant but still not that much important either so production and cost you can go through once but do not spend too much time okay and then we are just continuing from there so there is law of diminishing marginal product and law of variable proportion not required shape of total product marginal product these are not required over here you just need to study about returns to scale and very briefly about what is the nature of short run cost and long run cost and then we have a very important part which is the theory of the firm under perfect competition okay so what is the competition okay so we have to cover this entire part how do a profit maximizing company is going to sorry perfect competition firm is going to maximize its profit under different condition when we study perfect competition we also need to study monopoly we also need to study oligopoly and the monopolistic competition so when i am going to cover this chapter i will cover that also and by the way uh, this we do not have to study okay i have accidentally highlighted it supply curve of a firm okay the short run supply only is relevant okay the other three basically we do not have to study the long run shutdown point break even point or what you can do you can study it once because questions on this part is not asked just go through it once and just that you cover everything but do not spend much time on it okay because i'm just covering it on the basis of pattern of questions and not just any year entire past year questions and otherwise also if you skip some of these topics at least for example yes short run supply curve we can study okay but shutdown point normal profit break even that is not asked okay that would be too technical for us actually even they have given it in a very basic way but anyway since we are not covering all of this cost curve etc this is also not going to be relevant then determinants of a firm's supply curve so again very briefly we have to cover this also these are also not very very relevant what is relevant is the market supply curve okay that is what we study as a supply curve then price elasticity of supply Okay, so we covered the demand elasticity earlier. Now the price elasticity. So very selectively we cover this chapter, not entirely. And then we come to the market equilibrium. So in the market equilibrium, we have to cover the demand and the supply balance. When demand is extra compared to supply, what will happen? When supply is extra compared to demand, what will happen? What is the impact of each and every thing? And in what condition will there be market failure? So all of that we have to. cover and after that there is a glossary so that is all that we have here so selectively you have to study and when i'm going to cover these chapter by chapter you will get more understanding okay and in this case yes i made a mistake i highlighted this part also which should not have been highlighted so nonetheless this much is what we have to cover i will correct it and then only i will upload the slides so that is what i'm going to do so i hope this video has given you some idea about the structure of ncrt the coverage of ncrt because the way we have covered it here 
we have compared it with the UPSC syllabus also. And by the way, in the microeconomics, all that we have discussed is not directly relevant for means. In the means, no single question is asked from this portion, microeconomics. Only for PT, it is going to be directly relevant. But we need to understand it because that is the foundation of economics. Without that, you cannot understand many of the higher and let us say more complex concepts. Okay, so that is what we have to cover in this video. And we have covered all the NCRTs. Okay. And with this, I end this session. I hope this video has helped you. And in order to follow this series, kindly subscribe to this channel. You will get the videos regularly after this. Thank you.